What's up everybody? Today we're going to rock this 18 by 24 poplar frame that has some splines and is painted and spray finished. Let's do it. Once my favorite little helper was done helping me set up, I measured all four pieces at final length plus an extra inch for a little bit of wiggle room. From there, I carried those markings down with a speed square and then began cross cutting the pieces. First the short pieces and then the long pieces. Once I had my pieces cross cut to rough length, I started making the rabbits to hold the artwork and the glass. I did this by making one vertical pass and then laying the piece down and making a flat pass, which will cut out the rabbit to the width and height that I needed. I wanted a nice 15 degree bevel on the inside of this frame, so I started making that cut at the table saw, but you'll see here that I had some issues as the cut goes on. So what I didn't take into consideration here while making the cut was that as the bevel got farther down the piece, I didn't have as wide of a piece of stock that I was using. So therefore, having not been able to use a zero clearance insert as I'm so spoiled with every other time, the piece actually fell down into the opening where the blade comes out. To fix this issue and to be able to make the rest of the bevel cut safely, I took the piece from the rabbit that we cut out earlier and used some painter's tape to tape it back in place. Doing this gave me more of a surface on the bottom of the stock and it was able to slide through the blade uh, with ease, as you'll see right here. I then repeated that process on the three remaining pieces and moved on to my miter sled. I started at the miter sled by making a miter cut on one side of each piece. Then after measuring, made the final cuts and started to glue everything together. You'll see here what I'm doing is I'm adding glue and then using painter's tape as the initial clamp. I do that to help get things set up. This is an 18 by 24 frame so it uh, gives me a little more workability as far as setting things up. Once I have a nice tight fit, I'll move on and clamp as you see in the picture here. After giving it about 24 hours of dry time, I'll come back, remove the tape, and see how everything was set up. Next, it's back to the table saw, where you can see I'm using my spline cutting jig to make a spline cut in the corner of the frame. I do repeat this process on all four corners. Next, we have to make some splines for our miters. I take one of our cutoff pieces over to the bandsaw and resaw it to rough thickness, making sure to give myself a little bit extra. Next, it's on to one of my favorite woodworking tools, the drum sander. I know a drum sander is a fairly big investment, but the amount of time it saves you and the aggravation of getting things to a rough sanded state is well worth the initial investment. Having not had one for so long, and now having had one for just this season, uh, it is well worth the investment. Once we have our spline stock sanded to a good thickness, it's back over to the bandsaw where we cut out our splines. I make sure to cut them a fair amount oversized so that we have some workability and some room. Once our splines are cut, it's time to glue them in. I add glue to the frame and to the spline. And I just really start on the outside of the frame and you'll notice these are a little thicker, probably a, a good eighth of an inch thick. So they'll slide in pretty easy. The glue will just kind of drip down into there. I'll just rub some of the glue on the spline with my finger, set them in place, and then use a wooden mallet to tap them in. Once the splines have dried overnight, it's back over to the bandsaw where I cut them pretty close to flush with the frame. Once we trim the splines, it's time to move on to everyone's favorite part, finish sanding. 
I started with an 80 grit to remove all the rough pieces and worked my way all the way up to 220 to prepare the frame for paint. It may just be personal preference since I'm an artist, but I do like to paint my frames with acrylic paint and a roller. I do spray them sometimes, but it just feels like when I roll everything on, I get such a nice even coat. Once the frame is dry, it's time to turn to varnish. I usually do use a spray varnish because it dries quick and therefore is easy to build up the layers without having to wait too long. It leaves a nice satin finish and just really looks great when it's done. Here's our completed frame with that beautiful satin finish. I hope you liked this video guys and if you did, please be sure to give me a like and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already checked me out on Instagram, please do so at Ken Carano and uh, take a look at my website, KenCarano.com. Thanks. See you guys next time.